Hey Trace, how you doing? Just wanted to say thank you for offering to help me and um, let's go ahead and show you where I'm at real quickly on logging into the program and setting up a tenant through a quick ad system. So let's double click the icon to open up the application. And once it's open, the first thing we have to do is we have a uh, security warning here and we have to click that option and enable the content and we're good to go. Okay, next thing is we have to select a data file. We have to do this the first time we use it. Um, after that, then it will recycle those as it goes through. So let me just center that a bit. Okay, so let's find the data file and trace sex city and then data and then select open. Do you want to connect to a new backend? Yes. And give it a moment to attach all the files. There we go. We can enter the program. I've preloaded the um, password, so we don't have to worry about that at the moment. Got a splash screen, and then enter the program. Okay, so here we are. Here's my application. And um, to s what I said was we're going to set up a new tenant real quickly. So let's just do a quick add. And um, here's the form. We want to add a tenant. So let's go ahead and say tenant. And that's going to bring up the units, so that way we can select the unit 127 River. And let's make up a name real quick. Um, Rick, and then tab Christel. Okay, so if we put in the first name, last name, it will automatically put in an application name, which must be unique. You can't use the same name for two people. If you have, you can put a number after it or something different, so that way it's always the same. But this is a unique name within the system, and this is what's tracked. And then it also generated a group name for it, which is the address and then the first name, last name. And it took the address from up here when you selected the unit. So that automatically generated as well. Once everything is on these forms the way you like it, you can select Quick Add, and that will set up the base tables behind the scenes so you don't have to worry about that. And then it opens up the uh, next set of screens as well, or menus, which is we can set up a tenancy if we want. We can clear it and enter a new one, or we can just close the form. So let's set up a tenancy by clicking that and it automatically brings over the group name it brings over the address or the unit that the uh, tenant is in um, and it also shows you down here the app name was Rick Prestel and so carried that over as well and this is where the tenants would be if you have more than one tenant so anyways what we need to do is set an initial rent for the tenant and let's say 625 a month and we could, um, that's all we need to do at the moment. So that's done. So now that he's in, we can go ahead and uh, charge an initial rent for by, here, let me move that out of the way, clicking on tenant charge. And then, so let's select the tenant. That was Rick Verstel. And let's say that he moved in on the 15th of the month. And so because of that, we want to charge him a prorated rental amount. So let's say 300. I'm just making up numbers here. Now you'll notice that it also generated a note for you for that way on your invoice or your check stubs. It's already got the note there, so you don't have to write that out by hand. You know, there's no reason to write the same thing every time. So this is December 09. It's a rent, and it's from this tenant, so it takes care of that. If everything is there the way you like it, then you can just create an invoice. If you want to change anything, you can uh, change it uh, by typing over it, so it's not a problem. Assuming it's where you want it, we want to create an invoice by clicking the Create Invoice button and Done. And if you wanted to visually verify that everything worked out right, you can double click that and open that up just as a double check, but there's no need to. And the rent's 300, the invoice date's there, and the group, uh, the tenancy group is there as well. So that's all set up. Okay, so let's close that. So now let's go ahead and cl close that. And let's say the first of the year is coming and we want to uh, run the rent roll for all the units. We can go here, 
rent roll. It's going to show us all the tenants that we have that are active, that we collect the rent for, and then if we want to um, not charge some of the, say Ken here is moving out, we don't want to charge him rent, we can say yes, or we can say no, he's moving out, we don't want to charge his rent. If everything's there, oh, we want to change the date to the first of the year, which is right there. And that will automatically update the notes here as well, if you notice, so that way you don't have to type those. So everything's where you want it, say yes, and then we can just run the rent roll complete and there it is it will automatically show you the uh, invoices that were done so here's all the invoices that were done for that and no problem and we can close that and let's say we want to run a rent roll again for um, the first of January or December we forgot to run that so just click that put in the date it sets up the date and um, then we're good there and run the rent roll again and what that's going to do is pull up the rents that were run on that date. Now, the, um, what it is is it opens this up as a filter. If you wanted to see all the invoices that were run, you can just go here and reset the filter, and that'll show you all the rents that were charged for that period. So, anyways, that's a quick overview, and I'll talk to you later. Take care. Bye bye.